Today's episode was made possible through the continuing support of Jamie Grant. Thank you, sir. Hi there, guys, and welcome back to the shop. We are here today to cover some videos. I've been wanting to shoot these for so long. We're going to cover some videos on EDC because I have a really awesome gentleman out there. Hi, Ed, who is starting his first day as an industrial electrician tomorrow. And he wanted to get a look inside my tool bag. He's trying to figure out what he should carry. Now, this is what works for me. This is my EDC. EDC, everyday carry, is deeply personal, very unique to every individual out there who's ever worked in a trade or just carried useful stuff in their pockets. So I'm going to shoot a series of EDC videos of what I carry, and I'll put links to everything I got. And if you see something you like, cool. And if you, the big thing here is not just for me to teach, but for me to get to learn things from you guys. If you have a particular piece of EDC that is like super useful in your job, I wanna hear about it. Even if it's a completely different line of work, like if you're a pipe fitter or something, you're like, I use that a lot of this thing. I wanna know about it because that's cool stuff. And I just like hanging out with people and talking about tools and stuff like that. So if you have something super cool, Comment your comment in the comments or get in the Discord. The link's below. We hang out every night, 10 p.m. I do live show every night, and we hang out and talk about shop and engineering and tools, and we even play chess from time to time. So check it out. All right, so this is my electrical bag. That This is not like my get-home bag or anything like that. I do a lot of electrical work. I do a lot of field work. And I have a ton of people that just call me to fix stuff and help them out. So this is my electrical EDC bag. We start off with, this is the standard Klein backpack. They've got like three different ones now. This is the first one they came out with. I've had it for a couple of years and it stood up. It like, I beat the hell out of this. When it's not rattling around in the trunk of my car, it's getting drugged through greasy, nasty, spider infested power plants on a daily basis. But it, no rips, no tears, no problems. The only thing I don't like about it, it's got this really cool bottom where it'll stand up, work great you open it and then starting on the outside the the upper top pocket this pocket has a hard candy shell on it and it, it will protect relatively delicate things inside so this because of the first things I grab whenever I go on any site is where I keep safety glasses that are also sunglasses and then two pair these are the Honeywell Tomcats. I love these. Avitech, one of our viewers, turned me on to these. And this has been my go-to safety glasses every day of my life ever since. These are a standard clear set. These are the tinted ones. And they're awesome. Heavy-duty metal frames. They have kept more crap out of my face. I use those working under cars, working under generators, like all kinds of stuff where you just got crap raining in your face. Also in here, this is, this is the stuff you grab first thing. Sharpies. I got two Sharpies right there. Because when I walk onto a job site, one of the first things I do is hook a Sharpie right here. It's kind of weird right now with a microphone, but I'll, if I'm wearing a shirt like this, you tuck it in sideways. Half the time I'm just wearing a t-shirt. You just hook a Sharpie on your t-shirt. I always have a Sharpie right here. And it's, I use the hell out of it. Also in here, my black diamond, and I'm a rock climber, but uh, a really good headlamp. I work in a lot of dark, crusty, crufty, out of the way places. I do electrical work, so I'm always in walls and overhead and everywhere. So a really good headlight. You can buy cheap, crappy headlights at any big box store. Coast makes a few of these that aren't complete crap, but my life depends on this quite frequently. So I got a good one. This is a black diamond. It's designed for climbing and caving and hardcore outdoor environments. I have yet to kill this. I use it all the time. The big outer pocket, this is where I tend to carry a lot of consumables. This is where I'm putting pigtails and zip ties and wagos are the, the main things I grab out of here. But in here I have, uh, Sean just sent me a couple of these and one of them found its way into my tool bag. This is one of the Bosch tape measures. They make a few different models. This is the lower model. This one, you can tell the difference the fancy one has a Bluetooth plug right there, or, in, or a Bluetooth button. I have never used the Bluetooth function on this, but as just a simple quick tape measure, these things actually work really well. I like them a lot. I thought this was gonna suck. 
I honestly had very little hopes for decency on this. This is a pocket blowtorch, basically. It, it doesn't shoot fire, it shoots heat. It's got a screen in the end that keeps it from shooting a flame. It's like a flame arrester. This gets hot fast and works great. I use the hell out of this, especially on the boat. Boats, cars, trailers, vehicular stuff. Um, I use this a lot. It's a portable little heat gun and every crimp connector I do, so every crimp style termination are all marine rated heat shrink. That's just become my standard. It's all I buy. I use them at the power plant because everything there's underwater half the time. I use them on the boat, on the car, on trailers, any, anywhere I'm using crimp connectors, I'm crimping and heat shrinking. This thing is amazing and I love it. I thought it was going to die in a week. I have, I'm on like my fifth refill and it'll go all afternoon on one fill. I don't even carry a thing of gas with me. So this is a super cool tool. Zip ties, cheap, short, crappy zip ties. Um, you always have zip ties. Like I've got, uh, I EDC zip ties like crazy. The little tiny short ones, I use a lot. I also recommend carrying like six or eight inch, but these, I just chuck them in my bag and forget about them. These are the ideal grounding pigtail. I carry these all the time. These come in a couple different flavors. You'll find them in stranded or solid. You'll find them with or without screws. I get them in stranded, always stranded. I hate working with solid wire for stuff like this, especially with pigtails, because you're putting these in like four square boxes, stuff like that. You got to get around. Almost all the time, I'm cutting one end off. I run the screw into the back of the box, and then I cut this end off and it goes into a Wago because I'm splitting my grounds out. Every now and then though, they come in handy just as they are. And this is just a good thing to have around. Like even in just, if you're not an electrician, a regular EDC, chuck a couple of these in your bag. You don't need like a bag of them. I go through a lot of these, but you'd be amazed how often you need a little short piece of wire or two with or without a ring terminal on one end, a spade terminal on the other, it gives you a lot of options. You can cut this apart and strip down whatever you need, but wicked useful. And just a couple of these in your thing is great. Keep a little baggie, just an empty baggie or two in the bottom of your tool bag, because at the end of the job, when you've got a handful of screws and random crap, you put it in a baggie and it doesn't end up rattling around in the bottom of your tool bag for the next five years. Now here's the main purpose of this pocket. All of the Americans are about to hate me, and I don't care because you're all doing it wrong. Wagos. Wagos, Wagos, Wagos. Wagos for days, Wagos. I love Wagos. I hate wire nuts. I'm never going back. Or if you're Canadian, Marettes. Yeah, I hate them. I hate them. These are so much better. There are, there are, I will allow, certain places for certain types of wire nuts where you don't want to wago. If you're working on uh, big heaters and stuff like that, anything that gets really hot, you don't want to wago. You want a proper ceramic wire nut for that. Okay, fine. 99% of the time, places where you're sticking wire nuts, you could have a wago. They don't cost appreciably more. They work every bit as good. They're awesome. They're, I've seen people like, oh, they won't handle the current and I hate backstab conductor. I hate backstabs too. Don't buy the backstab kind. The backstab ones suck. The backstab ones are only useful for like lighting. LED, super low current lighting applications is the only place I would ever use that. And I've never bought them for that. I've never bought them. These are all the lever locks. There's two different types. There's the transparent ones and you can see levers. Okay, these are all lever lock. And then there's the heavy duty ones, also lever lock. They come in five pole, three pole and two pole. I don't know why it's two, three, five, because the number of times I've needed a four is off the charts. Also a six would be super useful. There are fake ones all over the place. Be careful where you buy them. I will put links in the description to real ones, but there are really terrible Chinese knockoffs that are garbage. Make sure you get actual Wagos. Even some of the fake Chinese ones say Wago on them. There are actual, these are so good, people are counterfeiting them, but Wagos. You'll notice there's no wire nuts in my bag. Just Wagos. I use a ton of them. Coming around the outside of the bag, I also have a good tape measure. This is the Stanley Fat Max 16 Auto Lock. This thing's awesome. First off, the Fat Max tape measures are great. They're wider 
just a hair wider than a regular tape measure. Everything else, it does everything that a regular tape measure does, except it does that. It just stays there. You press the button, it goes in. Now you can kick this and it'll work like a regular tape measure. If you move the slider up and then it just, it just does what you expect, but you just pop this down and it holds its position. You press the button and it retracts. It sounds stupid. It sounds really basic. It's the greatest thing to ever happen. Tape measures. I love it. So the Stanley uh, auto lock 16 foot. That's all I need for pretty much everything I do. And you just press a little button. It goes back in. It's great. It doesn't have to be revolutionary to be awesome. Other fun things on the outside. I carry a ridiculously large Sharpie. I have used the hell out of this, not just for standard electrician graffiti. Almost all my graffiti is uh, done in these. By the way, when I say graffiti, I'm not meaning like, Chris was here. Bah. No, no, no. Um, electricians leave graffiti behind. If, if you go through any industrial place, you start opening up cabinets and stuff, you'll see handwritten notes from electricians that have been there since they built the place of little things like circuit 16 grounds to here, or this goes here, or put these jumpers in here. Elevator guys do this like crazy. Anybody who has to, controls guys, elevator guys, they, they're all about the graffiti. And frequently they'll put their name with it. Like, you know, circuit 12 is jumpered out, safety interlock is twitchy on the west corner, stuff like that. You'll see things like that all the time. I use this for when I need to do scribing and stuff like that, or big markings, like I need a big arrow. Um, this, if you have worked in any plant I've ever worked in with utility tunnels throughout the basement where we have the network of tunnels and you see little blue, just line check arrow. Yeah, that's me. That's, that's me so that I can remember where the hell back to the beginning was. I'll put, I'll leave arrows just like that. And that's, that's the way back. I spend a lot of time in tunnels. Um, other things on the bag. This is the DeWalt version. Uh, Lennox makes a really nice one. I've got one knocking around here someplace. I should put it on my bag. But this is the one that just perfectly fits the little pocket on my bag. It's just a standard utility knife. And I like the folding one for this because it fits in the pocket on my bag and it'll clip and not fall out. But have a utility knife. There's mainly stripping wires, but just a million different things. This is phasing tape. This is not regular electrical tape. It looks like electrical tape and feels like electrical tape, but you'll see the spools are a lot smaller and they're a lot narrower. This is phasing tape. If you need to identify phases on wires, like this is my neutral or whatever, you can use stuff like this. That's phasing tape. I'm missing a few rolls, but that's whenever you see a tool bag with the, uh, the lanyard on the side with the little eye hook thing, the little carabiner thing, and the piece of just runner, just webbing. This is for putting tape loops on. That, that's what the exit exists for. Now you know. Also, this funny thing on the side of the bag over here, this weird clip. You'll see these on tool belts and bags all the time. That funny clip is for putting a tape measure on. That's, that's how that works. This is my really nice fluke tone set. I use this a lot more for datacom and stuff like that. But I just, the, the last job that I used this on was in a big power plant doing controls wiring stuff. We had to find a, it turned out to be a broken limit switch. But this is the Fluke Networks Pro 3000. There's two models of this. There's a fancier one that's got an extra button and stuff, but this one works just fine. And then this is the Pro 3000 toner. and. When you get this, I'm gonna do a video just on this thing because it's amazing on its own. But if you're not familiar with a tone set, this is a device that you can hook onto a wire that doesn't have power on it. And it whistles a signal up the wire that this can hear without actually touching it, just near it. You can, you can have the wire inside a wall and this will let you find the wire. So I'll, I'll fire it up and show you. Now you can see I've got, it's got little rubber booties on it. Okay, and this, this is designed for the telecom guys. So you've got telecom style grabbers. It's even got a bed of nails, which is something you do not see in the industrial electrical world because dudes would die. So I just set this to tone here and turn it on. And you can see the lights on solid. So I'm making a solid tone, press it again. I'm getting an alternating tone right now. 
and you don't hear anything. This is basically a little audio frequency sound generator that's shooting it up a wire, and it will shoot it miles down a wire. I'm not talking like 20, 30 feet. This will go all the way from one end of a plant to the other if it's like a big giant paper mill and it's a half mile long, no problem. So this is just an inductive pickup amplifier speaker. You press the button and it starts amplifying. And you can see it gets louder the closer I get to that. But if I'm, you can, you can see there's plenty of space between me and that thing. And it's still, still chirping. And the closer I get, the louder it gets. And there's a lot of little finicky things on using one of these. It's, it's a bit of an art form. Um, it, there's a lot of stuff to using this that is non-obvious. But I'm gonna do a video, a real instructional video on using one because, oh my God, they're great. And just, it's one of those tools that Telecom guys, communications guys, they reach for these every day. Uh, doing more industrial stuff, not so much, but when you need it, nothing else will do. And it has saved my butt a hundred times. Also, one of those cool things that you show up with that the average person doesn't know exist, and just showing up with that thing has absolutely justified them paying me substantial amounts of money because they didn't know you could do the job that easy. I just show up with that and be like, it's over there. Here, and, do, 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 and just march across the room and be like, yeah, that's where the wire goes. And you're like, how did you know that? The blueprints are from the 30s and we couldn't figure it out and I've had five guys trying to chase that all day and ah! Yeah, you just show up with that and be like, oh, wire's right there. Generic knife. This is just a Milwaukee knife. It's, there's nothing special about it. It doesn't suck. It's good. I like it. I use it frequently. The Weira 818-4-1. Or maybe it's known as the 05 1000. This screwdriver is the single most used tool in my bag. I actually carry one of these in my other EDC bag too. Um, I got one of these for the first time uh, recently, within the past year or so. I use the hell out of this. It's a, just a standard screwdriver. It's Weira, so you know it's really high quality. You pull the little ring back, this gets erect. You pull on that, you can swap the blades. And it comes with half a dozen bits in the thing. You can pack it down small like that. You can take this completely out and swap different things in here. This will hold just a regular, like any of your standard quarter inch drive bits that, that have the little necking on them, which is pretty common. Like anything with a quick change system has that. This will hold other brands of bits. I put DeWalt and Milwaukee in here just fine. But it's, it's just a little, screwdriver set, and I use the hell out of it. Like this is easily the number one most used tool in my bag. More Sharpies. Super, super useful. This is the Klein 11 in one, and it's got, it does stuff. It's got a million little bits and stuff. And not only does this have a bunch of standard size, like these are the standard bits and that, but they're double ended. And this is where it gets weird because people look at like, oh, there's two there and there's two there. Okay, how do I, I got four, how do I get 11? You'll notice these are two different sizes by a lot. Now you can swap the bits from one to the other because the bits are all standard sizes. It's the tube. The tube itself is a socket. So you've got different sized sockets on here. You can, it's, it's, there's a lot to it. This is super duper useful. Half the things I'm using this for have now been replaced by the Weira, but this is still super good. And this is tougher than the Weira. I'll stick this in gross, greasy, dirty places that I wouldn't stick my nice Weira. This is a generic, you'll notice all my screwdrivers are Klein for electrical, like almost all my electrical tools are Klein because Klein makes really good electrical tools. So different tool brands focus on different stuff. Like if you're an HVAC guy, you're all about Lennox. Like those guys are all about Lennox tools. And you know, other trades get into different brands. For electricians, Klein is pretty much the best where it's at. So this is just a big reefing on it screwdriver. You'll notice this has the drive part here and that's so I can put a wrench on that and like really lean into stuff. 
Don't use a straight blade screwdriver as a pry bar, except when you do, which is like all the time. Just make sure you wear eye protection when you do it because they snap off all the time. These two are basically the important parts of a small scale socket set that you can carry in screwdriver format. These have, they break down into changeable ends. Like, so there's one, two, three, four, and it all just clicks together. I use the hell out of these. This is its big brother, and it's got one, two, and a driver, three, four. I can't tell if that has a nut stuck in it or not. Nope, that's the magnet. It's okay. And then five, six, seven different things on it. And it gives you a comprehensive set. And I use the hell out of it. So the big one and the little one, they're not expensive. In America, Phillips head screws are king. It sucks, it's terrible design and I hate them. In Canada, they use Robertson drives. It's the square drive. And oh my God, they're great. The big advantage with the Robertson drive that I like is they don't cam out. And if you put a screw on the end of your screwdriver and it's a Phillips, they fall off. If it's a Robertson, it'll hang out on there. And any square D circuit breakers in the whole QO series all have a Robertson slash straight blade drive. So instead of just using a straight screwdriver on them that is more prone to cam out, I use a Robertson. That's why this one's insulated. And I use the hell out of it. It's great. Of course, you have the ubiquitous number two Phillips. Everybody has one. Um, this is like, if, if you own one screwdriver, it's a number two Phillips. I talked about these on the live show just the other day. This is the Klein 11061 strippers. You'll notice mine are missing bits. Um, these are, if you own one pair of wire strippers for generic, you know, industrial, commercial, residential wire, where you're working at like, 12, 14 gauge all the time. This is the strippers to own. These are absolutely the best. Um, the, I've got other ones. I've got the old Kleins with the, the guillotine jaws that come down like this on each side and they go ksh, ksh. Those things just wanna give you blood blisters and when they wear out, they wear out hard. I've got, I've worn out three pair of them over the years. Then I went to these a few years ago and love them. I use the hell out of them. These also have the advantage because they have the big wide jaw they strip Romex all at once. Like, boom, you can, you can strip the jacket in one go and then come back and get both the outer wires. The inner one's already stripped. All in one go, just pshh. So for working with Romex, these can't be beat. They're, they're absolutely wonderful. There are other types of strippers. There's other types of Romex strippers where you'll see a lot of the residential guys don't want to carry something this big. They, they carry the little thin ones. They work fine, I just don't like them as much, and the other ones are more prone to nicking wire unless you really know what you're doing. If you're a serious residential electrician, you know what you're doing after your first year, but just for most people, I recommend the automatics. These are the Klein 3005 CRs um, with, the, with that particular die set in them. These are what I use for all the standard nylon, vinyl, shrink wrap, crimp connectors. I use the hell out of them just because that's, that's a standard in my field. So these are the best crimpers I've ever known for that type of thing. These, my strippers, and my heat gun are some of the most used tools. I've had whole days where those, are, those three tools over and over and over and over again. It surprised me when I put these in my tool bag, but a buddy of mine, Danichi, got me for these for Christmas one year. And it's what set me down my path of Weira awesomeness. This is one of the little Weira kits, and it's a tiny little driver. Okay, it uses standard quarter inch bits, but it's a tiny little driver and a full set of bits. A decent set of small metric sockets, a little baby socket wrench here that works with the standard quarter inch bits, and a quick change adapter. This is, you would think, it's like, what the hell are you going to do with that? Like, what, what, what the hell am I going to do? That? I use the hell out of that thing. I use this to, I have done more in the field car repair with this because 
It's got a number 10. Okay, it's got a 10 millimeter socket. With, with these three sockets, you can take half of a car apart. <laughs> like, just, it's amazing. I have completely disassembled uh, somebody's car door and replaced the inner locking mechanism with just that. Just, just that. They're not cheap because it's Weira. Like, this little kit, I think, is like 80 bucks for one of these. Worth every penny. I love it. This is a little thing I've had knocking around in there for a while. It was given to me by one of you. A cool viewer out there sent this in. And I have used this several times on small computer stuff. And uh, I use this for uh, in doing controls, in doing terminal strips. This actually works really, really well. It's just a little toy cobalt set. It's not heavy duty by any means, but sometimes you need a little tiny you know, fingertip screwdriver. Completely separate from this, I have this rattling around in my tool bag. I had forgotten this was in here. I don't think I've ever needed both of them at once. This is probably gonna move to my other EDC. This is the Klein CL600. It's just a basic voltometer or DMM. And I use this one in my bag. I carry my fancy fluke for when I know I'm gonna be spending all day on a meter, but for 99% of the stuff I'd ever need to do, this works just fine. For basic industrial commercial electrical, this meter works great, I love it. The only thing I don't like about this particular one is it doesn't have a magnet back. I think you can get that as an add-on, but there's a lot of times when I just, the, the current, sensor on this spends a hell of a lot more time clipped to something in the backside of a control cabinet than it ever spends actually measuring current. I use it for that. I just I don't have to measure current that often. Basic set of probes for the meter. There's nothing special about these. They're not even matched. <laughs> this is a mismatched set. Get a good set of probes. This is just a middle of the road set of probes. Fluke makes amazing sets of probes and they're priced to reflect it. I have a set, I keep them on my Fluke over there, but I really should put a good set in the bag. Total oddball one, the average industrial electrician guy isn't gonna need one of these, but I keep one of these in my bag. Comment in if you know what it is. I'm not even gonna, this is, this is a thing you probably don't need. It's something you should probably have in your home shop, but just comment in if you can spot what that is. So here's a cute little fun one. Have a stubby screwdriver. They suck to use, they're uncomfortable, but there are so many places, especially doing electrical work, where you have to have one, nothing else will work. This particular one is the Klein, and it's the Ratchet Stubby Multi. So you can swap it out. You can set your direction here. So that unscrews that screws in and you can just change out the bit for whatever you want and it'll keep it's got four bits in it uh, it looks like a, a number one probably a number yeah number one number two phillips and then two different sizes of straight blade and you can put whatever the hell you want in there but it's cute it's useful i have not used this a lot it's one of those things that i only reach for every few months but when you need it nothing else will do and this will go down shorter than my Weir. Like that's as short as the Weir gets. Weir makes a stubby one too. I haven't gotten it yet. It's on my Amazon wish list. I'm gonna get it at some point and I'll check it out. Oh my God, own one of these. That little widgy bit has gotten me more work and solved more problems. They make a better one now. I just haven't got it yet. They make a, a digital version of this, but this one served me just fine and I've had it for years. This is the Klein RT210. All you do is you plug this in an outlet and you want the two orange lights to come on and if they don't or if any other combination comes on, something's screwed up. The nice thing about this particular one is it's got the black button that will test a ground fault. So if, you, if you've got a GFI outlet or a GFI breaker on the other end, you plug this in, boop, click, and you know everything's working right. These are the Kinepex alligator strippers. I love Kinepex tools. Absolutely top shelf. It's up there with Weira, like best that money can buy. If you're doing small controls wiring, 18 gauge and below, these are amazing. This particular model. Kinepex makes a bunch of different strippers, 
but for small wiring, especially where you're in it, like a, a controls box where you've got a billion wires and they're all small gauge, you're not dealing with like big 12 gauge and bigger stuff. This is, this is tiny stuff. These can't be beat. They're absolutely wonderful. I love that you can set the depth on them. These are great for anything small. 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 20 gauge, they're awesome. For big stuff, they work great up to, like you could do 12 gauge with these, no problem. But they're gonna wear out quick. They don't like, they, they don't like a big meal, okay? These guys are nibblers. They'll, they'll eat little wires all day long, but they're not cheap. And you're gonna be real sad if you start using this for just like, 10 gauge THHN all day long, you're gonna wear them out in, in a month or two. So I exist predominantly in the Milwaukee ecosystem. I use a lot of M12s because I'm an M12 size guy. I use a little bit of M18s, but 90% of the power tools I reach for are gonna be M12. So I almost always have an M12 battery around me somewhere. Because of that, I picked up this thing and it lets you charge your phone or any other USB stuff. I've run batteries off of this. Um, it'll give you a little 12 volt out and you can recharge a Milwaukee battery with a USB charger. So if you have like a USB charger in your car or something, this can save your butt. If you're down to your last battery, like I almost always have at least two batteries in me. So I'll run one dead, stick it on this, put it in the car and just because, because sometimes that's all you got. Um, so super handy tool. I don't use it often. I charge my phone with that more than anything, but when you need it, you need it. The standard Klein insulated multi-driver. You give this a spin and you got a number two Phillips on one end and a basic straight blade on the other. It is rock simple and insulated. I use this a lot. Um, own, as an electrician, own some insulated screwdrivers, but don't use your insulated screwdrivers for everyday, all the time use. You'll tear them up, you'll, you'll screw it up. Just take good care of these because at some point your life might depend on it. For the 300 people who are about to comment saying, you should never be working on live circuits. There is no excuse to ever work on a live circuit. Yeah, I know, I know. Come work in the real world sometime. A good, clean wrench. I work around power plants a lot. Every tool in a power plant is covered in grease, especially wrenches, because everything in a power plant is covered in grease, especially wrenches and the people. Millwrights and wrenches are always covered in grease. So I got this. This is the one I have carried for years and I don't use it a lot, but when you need it, you really need it. I'm usually using this for doing fittings, almost always conduit fittings. This, so this is where I start getting a lot of comments. This is a little beeper. Some people call it a tick tray. Some people call it a hot stick. It's not even close to what a hot stick actually is, but this is a little non-contact voltage sensor. And this one isn't even mine. It belongs to Moose. <laughs> but this is, the way it works is if a wire has electricity in it, 90% of the time, this, if you touch it next to it, will tell you the wire has electricity in it. So you can see it's green right there. I'll grab a handy wire. I touch this to the side. Uh, depending on where you are, that, see now it says danger, danger. If I stick this in the hot, danger, danger. So it says that's hot. It says that's not, it says that's hot, cool. There's an art form to learning to use these and never, ever, ever, ever trust your life to it. These lie. Doesn't matter who makes it, doesn't matter how new and fancy it is, every single one of these things lies. And if it tells you it's hot and it's not, no big deal. You can, okay, I shouldn't touch that. But if it tells you something safe and you go touching it, you get hurt. A good way to test these is rub it on your shirt. If you watch, this will turn red when I start rubbing it on my shirt. Okay, the static in your shirt will set them off. So it's a good way to see, okay, does it have batteries and is it working? Everybody should have one. You should never trust your life to it. A good basic pair of needle nose with a cutter and these even have a stripper in them. However, after you've had any good pair of pliers for long enough, especially working in electrical, you'll make them into a stripper the first time you cut a hot wire with them. 
a big chunky pair of lineman's pliers. This is also frequently known as an electrician's hammer. This, if for doing about 10 billion things as an electrician, this is one of the most used tools if you're doing conduit stuff, things like that. Like I use these all the time. These, this particular, they come in colors and there are different models. I don't know if it's color coded or what, but they make these in like red, yellow, blue, this particular set will cut armor light cable, the aluminum uh, metallic flexible conduit. These will cut that all day long, no problem. So I use these a lot. Oh God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> seven rolls of tape. Different kinds. Use different kinds of tape for different stuff. First off, have a thing of VHB. Um, if you need something to stay somewhere, this is a good way to do it relatively temporarily, depending on what it is. Um, this is 3M VHB. VHB stands for very high bond. They hold cars together with this. Any modern day car, half the body panels are held on with VHB. Electrical tape is a religious thing for electricians. There are absolutely different grades of electrical tape. Now, your generic, like you just need electrical tape, it's probably gonna be the 3M Scotch. That's the stuff I go for. I, uh, the, the Scotch Super 33 Plus. I use the hell out of that. It's good generic standard electrical tape. For certain stuff at certain times, you want other electrical tape. I've got some 3M Termaflex 1700 here. Um, this is Scotch 700 and this is 3M Scotch at yeah, Scotch 700. Do not buy the gigantic, super cheap Chinese 20 packs of electrical tape. It's garbage. It rots. It turns into sticky goo. Don't buy that. Buy, buy the proper good 3M Scotch electrical tape. There are other brands of electrical tape that are fancier or better. There's other types of electrical tape. You're gonna learn about things like fusion tape, which isn't even sticky. It looks and feels like electrical tape, kind of, but when you put it on, it doesn't have a sticky side. The act of stretching it and wrapping it around itself, it bonds to itself. Super useful. I am amazed I don't have a roll of it in here at the moment, but it's, it's something you use a lot. I also strongly recommend um, this is going to sound dumb, but you'll find places for it. Get a small roll of hockey stick tape and just toss it in your truck. You'll use it. A little tiny magnetic conduit bending level. This is super cool. I don't use this that often. Um, I have since upgraded to my, my electronic box, but this is the one knocking around the bottom of my tool bag. And they're not expensive. They're decent. It's got magnets on one side. It's got a screw clamp to actually grab the end of a conduit and just it's a basic simple level flat on one side grooved on the other and use this for bending conduit this is the little usb charger for my milwaukee battery charger easily one of the five most used tools in my bag a small pair of flush cut clippers. So in the tool bag, it's got this set of long little skinny pockets here for like pens or I don't know, drill bits or something. I found something ridiculously useful in here. I put a standard number two Phillips bit. I think that's a Bosch in there, but these, they're made by Malco and they're two different sizes. This is three eighths and five sixteenths. This is quarter inch and five sixteenths. And so like that, it's just a standard driver. And you can use these on M12 impacts and they'll, they'll take it just fine. It's got a little magnet to hold it in there. And to change it, you just take it off, flip it around, put it back on. You're good to go. These things are amazing. I love them. I use the hell out of them. Um, because frequently I'll get in stuff where I have to take out like a billion quarter inch screws to get some panel off or I'm installing stuff, things like that. I use the hell out of those. They're really beefy. I, I like how long they are because they're super long. I can reach into a box with them. So I'll use these on my M12 all day long and just, 
and it keeps the thing on there. They don't rattle off. It has a magnet to hold your your uh, screw in it, and they're just they're just good. They're not expensive. It's just one of those knucklehead tools that like it's not fancy. It's not expensive. It just does one thing really well. This is, and I've got a set of these. It bothers me that I'm missing one. <laughs> I've got to replace that. It's probably on a job site somewhere, but there you can get a whole set of these. This is the the Gardner Bender set. Um, this is a wrench that is specifically designed for conduit fittings. This is the three quarter inch size one. They make a red one and a black one, and it's for half inch and I think one inch. And this is what you use. I use these almost without fail. I'm using this inside a four square box where you want to get in, hook the ring and tighten it or very rarely loosen it. And that this is there's a wrench for that. They're super tiny. They're completely useless for anything else. Um, it that that's all this does. I think I once saw a guy open a beer with one. But Klein makes a tool for that. On the exact opposite end of the spectrum, I have the two least used tools in my bag, but I use them often enough that I keep them in here. This is just a basic Swiss Army knife. I've had it for years. I think this is a Swiss champ. This is a rather beefy Swiss Army knife. Um, it's certainly not the biggest they make, but it's. there are certain times when you just need this. Like, it's. it sounds dumb. It's hard to explain, but there's certain times you're like, damn it, I just... Ah, be, usually it's because I have not put something else in my bag and I need a particular tool at that moment. And Swiss Army knives, for as cool as they are, and, and don't get me wrong, I carry, I carry a Swiss Army knife that's the same, just about the same model as that, in my pocket every day. That's, that's, that's my pocket EDC. They don't do anything well, but they do so much good enough for now. And it's part of that whole, do the best you can where you are with what you have. So have a Swiss Army knife in your tool bag. I, mine's in, you know, you buy a nice one, they come with the holster, and I just slip the holster right in one of the, the little slings in the bag. Also along those lines, I keep a basic Gerber. This is the Gerber suspension. I've had it for years. Um, this has saved my butt a couple times. It's not a big chonky Gerber. This is one of the more lightweight ones, but it's in my tool bag. Ounces make pounds. I don't, I don't keep big heavy stuff in there. I don't use this very often, but I use it often enough to justify keeping it in my tool bag. So there you go. That's the whole thing. And I still have three Wagos knocking around in the bottom of my bag. So as you should do once a year, take your tool bag and just, oh, hey, look what I found. Surprise. We have a uh, six inch long T25 DeWalt driver. That's useful, all right. See, you just shake your tool bag every now and then. But that's everything I carry for basic electrical work. Let me know what you would add or what you would take out. If you see a tool in here like, why the hell do you carry that, man? Let me know. Maybe I shouldn't carry it. Maybe you've got a better idea because I don't know everything. I'm still, this is always a work in progress. That's how EDC works. It's constantly evolving and changing. Some of the stuff I just took out of this bag won't go back in it. And I'm probably gonna add a couple things as we go. But you'll learn about those next year. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. Thanks for hanging out in the shop and just exploring some tool EDC. We'll see you next time.